sizing of stuff in Windows Forms. Um, I was really surprised by uh, the amount of people that the previous um, uh, episode that's where I showed how to resize auto, auto automatic resizing of buttons in uh, Windows Forms. I was really surprised at the amount, at the number of people that, that, that found it really helpful. So um, because of that, uh, I saw a few requests in the uh, in the comments uh, of the previous video uh, asking for um, a similar uh, kind of uh, resizing, automatic resizing of the text. So if you notice in the in the um, automatic resizing of buttons that we did, the text does not the size of the text does not change. Okay, and I thought that's quite good that that might be useful because um the uh the the the, the resizing automatic resizing of text is is a little bit uh more tricky than uh, or trickier than uh resizing of um, of of normal controls uh for the simple reason that um if you if you think about it the the text has only that's the text the size of the text is only one property right it, it's just a float whereas the the um the control when you're resizing the control it's just you're just taking a mapping of the change in size of the form size which is a rectangle right to the change in size of your control which is also a rectangle so um you're just taking that um uh that change and just mapping it and kind of we um, maybe scaling it down to the correct uh, size okay so um, in today's lesson first of all I would like to show you what um, the final result of what this is going to be like so I've already written um, the code for it and this is what it looks like so you can see we have a label here we have another label we have two buttons and we have a text box here and when I try to resize this um, up uh, this window you can see that the control gets resized and also the um, the text inside each control. So the text of the label gets resized, the text on the button gets resized, the text on inside the uh, text box also gets resized. Okay. Um, just to show you that even if you change the text inside it still works okay all right so uh that's what we're going to try and do in this uh tutorial and um uh what uh, i i would have preferred to use the base um uh code that, that that we used in the previous lesson unfortunately i don't have uh access you know it's been almost four years i think i've lost um the code where i wrote the previous um uh, program that's the one we resize the button but uh, notwithstanding I've tried my best to um, uh, rewrite the code so the code is going to be very similar to um, the previous one even if there are changes it's going to be very very minor changes okay so um, I'm just going to close this and I already have a checkpoint um, I created a program with a uh, without the uh, resizing of the text that is so i think it's this one so so i've already written uh the one i just showed you uh you know this uh video is the one that has everything implemented that's the resizing of the buttons uh and other controls and also the resizing of the text inside the controls okay so this one this particular one that i've just opened now is uh, I've only implemented the resizing of the buttons and controls, okay? So it's very much similar to the um, original code that we wrote, okay? But they, I haven't, I have not yet implemented, by the way, let me just minimize this because this is part of the code for um, minimize, uh, for uh, resizing the, uh, the text. So I'll just go ahead and minimize those uh why don't we have okay so i can't minimize that i'll just leave leave that i'll just ignore this for now we're going to be using it when we um when we try to write the code for resizing the um for resizing the text okay 
So um, just to show you what this uh, looks like is if we run this, you'll see that if I resize this window, so it's the same type of form. The only difference is that it is only the controls that get resized. As you can see, the, the text on the controls do not change. Okay, that's the size of the text on each control does not change. So um, this lesson uh, is all about showing you how you can achieve, how you can go from this to the one I showed you earlier, where the text of the uh, on the buttons or on the controls also get resized. Okay. So to start off, um, in case you also like me, you lost the previous code, you can just go ahead and have a look at um, the uh, this code. This is the beginning. Just pause the video here. Have a look at how this is written. So most of these are unnecessary. I'll just remove them out. Uh, not useful. Not useful. Not useful. So these are. This is just the useful stuff. Um, I have a pause of the video and uh, take what. Um, okay. Some of those things that I just deleted, I just realized we might need them. Okay, maybe not. If we do, uh, if I later realize we need them, I'll bring them back. Okay. So uh, maybe do not delete some of those stuff that I um, just removed. Okay. All right. So um, uh, yeah, uh, I was saying uh, this is uh, just take a pause of the video. Make sure you have everything written correctly here. Um, so there's nothing special. This is remember when uh, form resizes, right? When the when your main form resizes, first of all, the position there are three things that are going to change on each control. That's whether it's a button or or a label or a text or a text box. The position of that uh, button is going to change. The um uh, the width of that button. So that's uh, the position. It's usually called the location. So the location of that uh, button is going to change. The width is going to change and the height is also going to change. So that, those are three things that are going to change. Now, instead of taking for each, so for example, for each um, object, like uh, I, I want to keep track of the changing in size of the, uh, I want to keep track of the old uh, location of the, uh, of the button and also the width, the original uh, width of the button and the original height of the button. Okay, I want to keep track of them. That's why I'm creating these variables. Now, instead of creating three different variables, each for uh, for each control, what I decided to do is I'll just create a rectangle. Okay, so a rectangle has um, uh, a location, a width and height. Okay, so these are all my three things bundled in one okay so uh, a rectangle um i think it's a class it should be a class or a struct okay it's a struct okay so um a rectangle struct um has a uh, a location a width and a height so those three things are all bundled together inside a rectangle okay so that's why i'm using a rectangle data type so i'm also notice that i'm also keeping track of the um of the original form rectangle Okay, that's the main Windows form. Okay, and I'm also keeping track. So for each control, this for my button one, this for my button two, this for my level one, this for my level two, and this for my text box. Okay, um, and then in here in the load, uh, in the from one load event handler, you make sure you you kind of store or or, or take a snapshot of the original sizes. Okay. So take a snapshot of the uh, of the original form uh, rectangle. Take a snapshot of all the controls, their original uh, rectangles. Okay, and then also uh, you can pause the video here. Make sure you have everything here correctly. So uh, in the form one resize event handler, we're just calling resize children controls. I try to make. Uh, I try to. Uh, I I'm just trying to write the code exactly as we had it in the uh, original code in the base code where we um, uh, resized uh, buttons only. Okay, 
So um, resize children control is going to call resize control method for each um, uh, button, okay, uh, or for each uh, control, okay. So um, and this is what the signature looks like. It takes a control uh, data type. It takes a control object and a rectangle object. Okay, so the control object is the control you want to resize to make sure it's it changes its size based on the new size of the of the window. Okay, and then the um, uh, rectangle you're passing it is the original rectangle that you kept for that particular control. Okay, so uh, if you look at each call of resize control for button one. We're passing button one, which is the control, and also the original button one rec, which we actually copied here, which we took a snapshot of in from one loop. Okay, so there's nothing special here. It's just the um, normal, uh, just like the previous code. Okay, there might be uh, slight changes, but I don't think the changes are enough to put you off. Okay. All right, so uh, in the resize control, uh, what we did is we just take an X ratio. So we calculated an X ratio. X ratio is just like um, by how much has our um, our uh, the width of our form uh, changed. OK, so if you can see, we're taking the um, width of the original form. Uh, sorry, we're taking the width of the current form. Uh, that's the current width of the form. You know, when it resizes, the, the width has changed. So we're taking the current width and then dividing it by the original width of the uh, of, of the window, okay? That gives us our X ratio. For Y ratio, we're just doing uh, the same thing, but for the height, not the width, okay? So those two things are what determine by how much we want to change the size and position of our controls okay and then uh we're creating um new x and new y the reason we're breaking it into this is because uh you cannot say control.location.x is equal to something okay because um that uh uh anyway um i'll i'll show you okay let's let, let me just show you what i mean you cannot do something like this control.location.x the reason is because oh actually you could okay never mind um, you could actually do that, but um, let's just break it out into these two. We first calculate the x, the new x, the new y, and then you set the location to a new point. Uh, and then uh, we, you also also remember to cast it back to int. So a point takes an int data type. So that's why I'm casting new x to int, also casting new y to int. Same goes here. Because X ratio is a floating point number, we want to cast this to float and cast. I know I've already talked about this in the original video where we resized the control. Okay, so now I'm going to show you how we're going to start um, coding out if we want the text to, to, to equally change. So first things first, make sure you write this code at the beginning. So where we create our variables, just create these variables. I'm going to explain what this is doing for now. We probably don't need it. Okay, um, just I'll just highlight it out. It, it's just an extra bit of control uh, I put in there. But for now, don't worry about it. Just uh, comment it out. For now. So uh, these are the things we need. We need the font size. That's, um, we need a variable that can hold the original button one font size. Okay, so each control, every control has a text, um, sorry, has a font property. Okay, so that font property is uh, also has a font size. Okay, so we want to take a snapshot, we want to keep the, uh, uh, a record of the original size of each font at the beginning of the program. So here we're just creating the variable where we're going to store the size of the font, okay? So for each control, so if you have 10 controls, if you have 10 buttons, you have to make sure you create 10 variables here that stores um, the font size, okay? And then uh, in the from one load event handler, after you take a snapshot of your of your uh, rectangle for each control, you also need to take a snapshot 
of the font size okay so this is where we're keeping track of the original font size so notice how i did it i said original button one font size which is the variable which we declared there we just say equals now uh you have to be careful if your button is called button one then you can write it like this uh it could be that your button is not called button one so make sure this name is the name of your um, control okay so in my case um i'm using i'm, I'm using uh, button one because the name of my control is button one okay so it's button one dot form uh dot font dot size uh the same thing with every uh control so i have a label one i have a text box one okay all right before i continue with the code i just remembered something about the text box um I'll, I'll i'll just take you to the design view and show you uh uh what um, i did for setting up the text box so now uh, um to do that i'll just drag in a text box from the toolbox there's a text box okay here it is i'll just drag it in okay so notice what happens with uh by default if you drag in a text box if you go to your properties window okay i don't have a properties window showing so i'll go to view and choose a uh, properties window so my properties window is now showing so if you select this text box and go to your properties window and look at the uh, size property okay so this is my size property the size property is kind of locked to uh, that's the width uh, sorry the height of the of, of the text box that's the default text box is locked to, to 20 okay so if i try to change this now to say 30 or let's say 100 something you can see you'll see that it immediately changes back to 20 so it's not going to allow us to change the size uh the width uh, sorry the height of that particular text box so in order to uh, allow you to change that size you have to make sure you change a property called the multi-line property Okay. So at the moment, the multi-line property is uh, set to false. So you have to make sure you change it back to true. Notice that immediately I changed it back to uh, I change it to true. The uh, height of the uh, text box has uh, automatically changed to 100, which I set initially. So now you can freely change this size of this text box. Okay, you can even come in here and change the size dynamically like this. Okay. So that's just what I want you to know, okay? Also, um, I think there's an even easier way to uh, change that multi-line property. So let me just change that back to false. So uh, another e uh, an easier way you can change the multi-line properties, you see this little play button at the top of the text box. You can just click on it and you'll see that uh, it, there's a checkbox there that says multi-line. So if you tick on it, uh, that gives it to that changes the multi-line property to true and that allows you to resize your text box okay so make sure when you bring in your text box if you plan to re automatically resize it make sure you set the multi-line property to true okay all right let's go back to our code so back in our code um uh where did we stop okay we took a snapshot of the uh, font of uh, uh, of our controls, um, uh, sorry, the size of the font of the controls. So the next thing uh, we're going to do is in uh, resize control, we're going to need three things, okay? So you see initially, uh, previously all we're doing is we're passing a control, an original control rect. The reason is because uh, we're only changing the the properties of the control client rect or, or uh, something similar to that okay we're changing we're only interested in changing the width the height and the location of the control but since now we also want to change the text size okay that's the size of the text of the control we also have to pass in an extra argument to this uh, method which is the um, we're going to it's going to be a float which is the size and the argument we, we want to pass in is the original size okay original uh, font size okay so the original font size meaning um remember these guys here where we uh, took snapshot of them 
So for each control you, you, you're trying to uh, resize, you also have to pass in its original font size so that you can um, change it within this method. Okay. Also notice that immediately I added this extra argument. You can see this resize control method begins to complain. Uh, it's because right now it's taking two arguments, whereas this uh, the original method takes three arguments. So uh, uh, never mind. We'll just add a comma there and add uh, original. So for here, we're going to say button one. Button. Oh, sorry. I think I called it original. In fact, I'll just copy and paste them there. For button one, this is the variable I created. I called it original button one font size. I'll just pass it in there. Uh, for this one, I'll copy Control C comma control v to paste that for this i'll just copy that paste that in there uh this is for the label too so yes if you have uh 10 control you have to make sure you repeat this step for each control this might seem uh counter effective or ineffective but um, the reason I'm doing it this way is just to make it very, very simple. I don't want to write complicated code that uh, beginners might find uh, difficult to follow. So that's why I'm uh, laying it out this way. Okay. All right. So um, uh, resize control, you can see now the errors have gone. So right now we're passing in uh, an original font size inside this resize control method, but we're not actually... Uh, using it to do anything but not actually doing anything with it so here is where we actually write the code to change uh, the size of font so we're going to say um, first of all we we have okay before we even try to do that um, notice what we're doing when we're resizing when the form uh, your window resizes what happens is you have a change in X okay that's in the width which is uh, stored in X ratio. And you also have a change in height of the form, which is stored in Y ratio. Now, if if I should ask you, which which of these two should you use to calculate your uh, the size, that's the new size, your new font size? Because uh, unlike um, your control rect, this has only one property, which is just a uh, float which is just a floating point number, okay? I don't know if um, I'm, I'm making sense. So what I mean is, you see, if we use X ratio to calculate our new font size, now it means that if the if our window now resizes along, um, along the Y axis, um, uh, along the Y axis, uh, is that right? Okay, along, along the width, right? Uh, then you're going to have uh, cases where um, your 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 bot uh, your text the text on the buttons are going to overlap the the size of the uh, of the control. Sorry, if, if we um, I think what I meant is if we're using X ratio to calculate uh, to calculate the size of the the font size, if we if we only resize the window along the width without resizing it along the height then you're going to run into a situation whereby the text inside the um inside your button is going to overlap your control okay so it's going to be too large okay so um the simple uh thing you know, i i i think you sh uh, we should do is we should actually take only the minimum okay so we're going to take the minimum if y ratio is greater than x ratio then we're going to use X ratio to calculate the size of our new font. Okay, that's for each control. However, if Y ratio is uh, if X ratio is greater than Y ratio, then we're going to use Y ratio to calculate the size. Okay, that's the trick I I, I used in the um in the uh, code you saw. Okay, so uh to do that, so I'm just going to take a minimum. So to do that, what we're going to use to do our calculation, I'm going to call it ratio, and I'm going to say at the beginning is equal to x ratio. Okay, initially it is 
x ratio, but we're going to use an if statement if uh, x ratio is greater or equal to um, y ratio, then we should say ratio is equal to y ratio. So that's uh, that's what I'm doing here. All I'm doing between here and here is I'm just saying ratio is equal to the minimum between x ratio and y ratio. Okay. So if x ratio is smaller than y ratio, then use uh, uh, ratio is going to be equal to uh, sorry. If x ratio is greater or equal to y ratio, then ratio is going to be y ratio. However, if the reverse is the case. The ratio is going to be equal to x ratio okay so we're just taking the minimum between x ratio and y ratio okay all right um and then in here we're going to create our new font uh original uh sorry new font size so i'm going to it's going to be a float new font size is equal to we're going to use this to calculate we're going to say original font size multiplied by uh, ratio okay all right and then um, finally okay so here uh, notice this we cannot just take our control and stick that uh, font font size into it so what I mean is we can't do something like this control dot font dot size equals new font size we cannot do this okay the reason is simply because control dot font dot size only has a getter is a property that only has a public getter okay it doesn't have a setter so you can see it's only get that is uh, available there meaning we can only read from control dot font dot size we cannot set control dot font dot size so because of that we have to break this down into two different um, into uh, two uh, lines of code we have to first say um, new font sorry that's going to be a font data type font new font is equal to new and then we're going to call the font constructor and the one we're going to use is this one uh, the one that has the font family okay and then we're going to pass in control dot font dot font family so we're just taking the original font family okay we're taking the original properties of uh, the properties of the original font size okay uh, original font okay and then uh, the size we're just going to pass the new font size All right, and then down here we can now say uh, control dot font rather than control dot font dot size. We can just stick in control dot font is equal to new font. Okay, and I believe uh, that is it. Also notice that we only uh, wrote the code inside resize control, but when we're calling in resize children control, we're actually calling resize control on every single control okay so uh, if we run this program we're going to see what it looks like if we resize it now you can see the sizes of the text also uh, changes okay all right um, I'll just before we end the tutorial I'll just show you one uh, one uh, extra uh, trick so using this font scale so maybe you 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 don't have the size of the font uh, uh, changing or increasing to the right size or increasing to the size you prefer okay so if if you if you want to tweak if you want to tweak that size uh, that size of that font you can actually use uh, an extra um, property uh, or an extra variable I'm, I'm calling it font scale so for now i'm just setting it as one uh the f is because it's a floating point number okay 
and then down here where we calculated our new font size you can multiply that by the uh what did we call it i think we call it font scale so you can multiply it by font scale okay now what this allows you to do is that it allows you to scale so at the moment because font scale is one if you multiply anything by one it remains the same thing so right now it's not really doing you wouldn't see any effect okay because there's no change whatsoever because i'm using the font scale of one but notice i can now come back in my code and do something like change it to 1.5 for example and now when I run this program, you'll see that the size of the font, you can see this immediately overlaps um, the size of the text box, okay, which is probably not what we want. Okay, and you can see the size of the fonts are larger than in the previous um, run uh, in the previous um, running of the program. Okay, so um that's the use of the font scale, not just increasing the size, you can also reduce, you can shrink it down. So I can shrink it down to maybe 0 0.8. And when I run this, rather than increasing size, it's going to be a bit smaller than what you would expect it to be, okay? And uh, so yes, you can play around with it and find a sweet spot for your um, the size of your phones based on what you're trying to achieve, okay? So using 1.2, what you're going to end up with is something like this. But uh, for me, I think uh, keeping it at one is, so that's just like not even using it at all, okay? So keeping it at one is the same as not using the font scale at all, but some people might find it useful. So um, maybe we should just leave that in the code, okay? So uh, have a pause here. Make sure you have everything written correctly. Um, have another pause here. Make sure you have everything written correctly. And then finally, have a pause here also. Make sure everything is written correctly. And uh, that's it. Yeah, I'll see you in uh, a new tutorial, hopefully.